Okay, do it. It's like I'm walking on sunshine. This is Doomcast number 42. My name is Doug Owen, and I am the senior editor of BlacklistedNews.com, our co-host, co-founder, and what? good friend, buddy of mine, and what? yeah, uh, an, an all-around pretty swell guy, Charlie McGrath to the right. What's up, Charlie McGrath? Not much. Not much. Just sitting here. I'm sweating, Doug Owen. I'm in the Doomer studio mm. right next to you, sweating like a... Ba, ba, da, ba, Have you been church. working out? What's going on over there? Why are you sweating? Or you know, I'm in Montana, and it's it's not normally this warm this fast. And I don't know, it's probably 80 in my little studios upstairs in the uh, in the joint here, and I don't have the air conditioner set up yet, so it's stifling in here. I'm sitting here in a um, in a t-shirt that goes by a name that is Redneck Variety. Wife beater. They call it a wife beater. Can you say Which, that anymore in this politically correct no, world? It's pretty <laughs> offensive. You know, it is. It actually is. Really? I don't, I don't condone making jocularity of beating your wife. That ain't, that ain't right. That ain't right, man. Right, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's just the political correctness of the day is, is gone too far. With this Mark Cuban thing, I want to talk yeah. about that. I want to briefly talk about Chipotle. No. You know, that, that really angered our producer, Craig, he was not Chipotle. happy. Yeah, you didn't hear about this, Ro? They've... No, he probably he probably sent it to me and I missed it. Sorry, Craig. Oh uh, yeah, open carry. They have officially asked people not to bring their guns to Chipotle because it scares their customers. And I don't I don't have a problem with that. I just wouldn't visit Chipotle if I was an, uh, if I was an open carry guy. Wow, that sounds so rational. You're supposed right. to be so much more angered. Angered. Oh, That's what the media that, is trying to do that, is hype crap, you up. That's... They, they, they don't have, they don't respect the Second Amendment. You know that, ain't, folks. That ain't what it's about. If you own a business, you know what, and you, and you you know you don't want to serve somebody that's packing heat. That's your right. That's your right. They, and it's their right to never set foot in your establishment again, or to badmouth it, or whatever they want to do. So, I you know I I'm a libertarian at heart, and it, you know I'm I believe in private property, and I believe that you know that is their castle, if you will. And if they don't want you coming in there without a shirt on, okay. If they don't want you coming in there without a shoes on, okay. If they don't want you coming in there packing heat, then get out. But you should be okay with a baker not having to make a gay wedding cake. You should be, if you believe this, just like you and every other person on the left that is championing (laughs) Chipotle, then you have to say that uh, I think that this is okay. Those people have to acquiesce. It's okay to refuse. I do acquiesce. I do. I do. I say if you don't want to make a cake for a gay person or, or you know, God forbid, if you're such a backward ass moron that you don't want to make uh, a cake for an Irishman or a black guy or a Mexican, hey, hey, go for it. Let your business suffer. I don't care. There was and, a time. It, it, there was a time. It, well, what? When people were uh, scrutinized or uh, discriminated against, especially Irish. Yeah. Tell me about it. I still feel the scars, the pain of the plight of my people. I'm sure those Chinese people that worked on the railroads across the don't United States of China. America, they probably are not. <laughs> I don't care. Good. I'm glad they suffered. Oh, China, the big bank deal, man. That is the big, big story. Yeah, $400 billion. Not that that really means anything these days, yeah. but this unprecedented decoupling of the uh, the rivaling or the decoupling of the uh, petrodollar, the unraveling of the U.S. hegemony over yeah. energy, the, the the relegating of OPEC, all all of those things have been said. Russia today. and China have just signed what is being called the gas deal of the century, and the two countries are discussing moving away from the U.S. dollar and using their own currency to trade with one another. Big, big, big deal. Mm, that's a that's a monster deal, and you know it it will be fought by the central bankers. Um, and you know this is what wars are fought over, Doug. Hmm. Wonder what's going on in Ukraine. Central banker would not be denied. They get a little testy when you don't use their uh, Federal Reserve notes to trade these things because it it uh, it propagates the validity of that as the global reserve currency when China and Russia and who blames them. You know, China, Russia, why should they have to use the dollar in order to change, exchange uh, natural resources? Why? It doesn't make, you know, it, it 
usurps their sovereignty to do so. So more power to Russia, more power to China, more power to the baker who doesn't want to make gay cake, and uh, and Chipotle who don't want people with guns. It's their business. It's uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm we we went a little fast over that. So I I. I I hit the brakes and backed up a bit. No, it's okay. I mean, with Chipotle, I agree. I think that you have the right as a business to discriminate for whatever reason, even That's if right. it's uh, really, really, uh, you know, disgusting or mean you know, here's, or here's for whatever th- reason. Here's a question for you, Doug Owen, because you're so <laughs> smart. Sure. Really. Are. <laughs> right. <laughs> Truly, that's a fact. Um, is Does it change anything if it's a publicly traded company in your mind, I mean, does that does that throw it into a different category uh, than just a private business owned by an individual? Well, maybe. I mean, Chipotle, what they do with their business, I don't think so. But, you know, the politics of fast food just seems kind of silly to me. It's, you know, the same thing with Chick-fil-A. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go eat Chick-fil-A because I'm gay. It's like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're just selling chicken. Yeah, you know, and uh, if, you look at the chicken, it, if you look at the was, chicken itself, I mean, the inhumanity that goes into the, the production of chicken and all the other, you know, nasty things that you could probably expose Chick-fil-A for, you know, the, you know their uh, owner or one of the head CFOs being a Bible thumper and thinking that, you know, uh, gayness is a sin. Regardless of what I think, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's what, what they're putting on your plate. And so I think that most of these things are just kind of, uh, you know, just a way to get people riled up about nothing. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, I I, uh, I, concur. I just wondered that the, the question, because I thought of that, I pondered that topic uh, or not. But but again, you know, it, it, it's a, I, I guess even if it's publicly traded, you, you have the ability uh, to sell that stock or to dump the stock or whatever if you don't agree with their policy, which... You know that you know yeah. the, the 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 pocketbook is the you know, number one means of protest, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, for it to for for them to be demonized or glorified uh, is a distraction. Period. Right? I mean, would you agree with me on that? Absolutely. I mean, you know, just to look at recent events, you have the Justice Department using the banks to scrutinize and go after gun dealers. Yeah. Uh, basically denying them the ability to to bank in, in this country and other unsavory people. And, of course, they're going after the porn stars first and, and using this o- uh, Operation check uh, Choke Point to target, you know, undesirables, people that are doing business that runs counter to, you know, Mayor Bloomberg's uh, mayoral group of uh, gun grabbers. So, yeah. you know, that's where I see the big problem. Private businesses or even publicly traded businesses doing, you know, putting their customers first, at least in their minds, even if I don't agree with it, I think is their their absolute choice. Yeah. And, and, well, and, and whether or not it's the right choice, I mean, it brings us back to good activism and bad activism. And just to sidebar for a moment, I don't know if you saw the Sandy Hook memorial that was defaced by the the, the Sandy Hook, for lack of a better term, truther. You know, people out there that believe that uh, all of the children that died were crisis actors and that, uh, you know, even even some of the other conspiracy theories that they have shown up, the same group of kids at yeah. singing at the, the Super Bowl. I mean, you see this stuff. Uh, it, it goes around the, the Internet. Well, anyway, somebody defamed uh, this memorial for I think it was a little girl. And basically said, you know, you didn't exist, and uh, you know, blah blah blah. They, they 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 vandalized the memorial, right? Saying this is okay. all just a psyop, this is all BS, and you know, and I'm a person that my opinion is that uh, you know, there's a lot of things that really uh, don't make a lot of sense, and there is an absolute cover up, and that is why they're pulverizing the building. That's why they have done everything to stymie any. Uh, analytical research and just about uh, you know any kind of information coming out of the investigation and but you know it brings me back to good activism versus bad activism you know you you don't have to convince Charlie McGrath most of the doomers doom nation and you know our producer that the second amendment is something that we should cherish it's it's something that's unique to this country pretty much we're the the last place in the free world if there is such a thing (laughs) the free world that you can pretty much own a a firearm without a lot of government red tape Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean you still can 
and I'm not going to go into the logistics of that, but to see, you know, that, that this is, uh, you know, that, that, you know, people like you and I end up on <laughs> the side of, you know, libertarianism when it comes right down to it, you know, looking at mm-hmm. these issues anyway. Well, wait, wait. Uh, so you, you, you're kind of dogging the guy who, I, I mean, I, I agree with you if that's the case that when, are you supporting the guy that went out and vandalized the memorial? No, I just think that you're not, you're not, you know, people like you and I, you don't have to convince, you're not going to convince other people. Oh, that, by doing that, by I doing you. that, you yeah. know, or, 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 you know, brandishing firearms. And I know, yeah. you know they're not pointing them at people, but still it's a little unnerving. It, 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 isn't it called tact? I mean, that's <laughs> you bring up a yes. great point because in this community, right? Uh, you know, uh, let's let's take the Jews for example. Okay. Oh goodness! All right, <laughs> I've got a bunch of Donald Sterling stuff I want to get to. So, oh, speaking of, speaking right? of, yes. Okay, so let's talk about the Jews for a minute, okay? Because there's, I mean, there's a lot of people uh, in this community that are. <laughs> that really try to sell their their uh, point of view on Jewish people in a way that is guaranteed guaranteed to fail. Not only is it guaranteed to fail, it's going to have the exact opposite by what? of what they're by doing. What I mean, what what exactly? By, by everything just on it, the Jews? everything is the Jews. You, you make I make a video. The comments, ah, oh, it's the Jews. Charlie, you're a shill because you never talk about the Jews. It's the Jews. This Jews that, and it's just the same thing over and over again. And really, really, uh, uh, hardcore, uh, full court press on on anti Jew. Right, and uh, you know. If their if their point they're trying to make out is or trying to make is that there's a lot of Jews who are, who are in the financial sector and they stick together and they're running a lot of banks and there there's a lot of power in their uh, in their uh, uh, activist agencies then or their PACs then you, you're not doing it. All you're doing is making yourself look out like a, a, an ignorant uh, buffoon and you're you're building a case against what you're trying. <laughs> to uh, convince people of sure, I, and and then I get you know then when I bring that argument up to people they're like well I don't care I'm not a sellout I'm going to say what I want to say and I'm like well you know more power to you but if you actually are doing this because you want people to hear you and understand your message and try to convince people well you're failing if you're doing this just because you want to sound like you're the smartest person in the room and somehow you know something that nobody else knows uh, if, if that's your goal to hear yourself talk well then you're winning. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it it scapegoats individual crimes and individuals that uh, I mean, looking at uh, different networks of people, power, influence, and uh, you know the agenda. I mean, when yeah. you know the, the racism that really is like Zionism, uh, it, you know, wanting a Jewish state. I mean, that in and of itself is you know very racist <laughs> this yeah. is no this space just saying- for all the white people with blue eyes and blonde hair doug owen can get in but not too many other people and that's gonna yeah be- i'm not saying that they, that these these wackos don't have a point i'm not saying that they no no, no they do they-, they do but the problem is is that they they indict so many people under this large big tent operation exactly. That it lacks all credibility because then when I look at something like, I don't know, the Colorado, Aurora, Colorado shooting, Mm -hmm. we were talking about a host uh, earlier (laughs) before the show started. And, uh, you know, he he blamed that on the IDF. And, yeah, the IDF does a lot of bad things and covert operations and assassinations. But I don't think that they were in charge of that. And if, if you could prove that, that'd be one thing. But just these... You know, people that I, I, they just put out so much disinfo and so so much crap that the truth is completely obfuscated, and that's the big problem. And that's the same thing with with what happened at Sandy Hook. I mean, re, you know, asking poignant questions, uh, going after uh, the the state for its secrecy. Those are things that I think are productive and get it, you know people that that you know have an IQ of over eighty interested in maybe what you have to say. Um, you know, and, and, and I don't know. I, I think that the big, big problem is that some of that stuff, it's so it, it's so based in hate and creating, you know, a group of people to, uh, you know, to, to kind of objectify that to, to throw it on. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and to throw the blame on and to, mm. you know, just uh, uh, to have one target. And 
you know, again, if you want to, if you want to hear, just hear yourself talk and, you know, and shock people, then, then you're achieving it. But you're right. If you, if you're grabbing everything that comes down the road, and even if you truly believe that your group, and in my example, it, that it's the Jews that or are the responsible for it. Throw the Bilderbergers in there. Some other group. No, nah, nah, I'm sticking the with the Council Jews. The Council on Foreign Relations or the Trilateral Commission or... No, nah, I'm sticking with the Jews. I'm, I'm, I'm running this Or the Jew Republicans thing. or the Democrats. <gasps> Like a Rush Limbaugh. Just blame it all on the Democrats. It's all a well, big Democratic kooky conspiracy. It's the same thing. Or the Jews. Or the Jews. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying is this. If you, if you grab that and you put it there, that in front of everything that is uh, bad in the world, without evidence, without proof, right? Uh, the, there's plenty of things out there that you can convince people with that you can back up. You can back up the fact that... That, that so many Jewish people are involved in the banking system and control, and, and that APAC has so much power and influence, and that we're wasting billions of dollars every year, uh, you know, fortifying their military, which is one of the strongest on the planet. You know, there's plenty of evidence that, that there's corruption going on between government and uh, the, the nation of Israel. But all of that is lost when you just go BS crazy. You know what I mean? Well, either way, they're going to try their best to call you a racist to minimalize yeah. anything that you say. You know, I mean, that's that's pretty much par for the course. So, so uh, you know, I want an update. How yeah. is the Doomcast softball team doing, Charlie? McGrath? Oh, that's a good question. A good question. And we 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 neglected uh, last week. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I want to know see. how these dooming girls are doing and boys, young men. No, they're doing good. They're doing good. Their their record is two and one. They're in the midst of a game right now. Uh, so I don't have the update for this week's game, mm. but I can, I'm going to give you uh, last week's uh, tally here. Final score in last week's game. Now, they, they, they shellacked their, their first game. You know, they won uh, handily. Now, that was the first game they represented Doomcast.com. They are the Team Doom. They all are aware of our site now and what we do here. Uh, some of them are into it. Some think we're just nuts, but they're yes. all wearing the free T-shirts that I gave <laughs> them, so who cares? Right. Uh, so uh, the the last week's game, final score, they they lost their second game. Uh, it was, I think, a case of half the team was hammered during the game, but they got serious last week on their last game, Ooh. and the final score was uh, eighteen to zero. Jared, number twelve, he hit a home run uh, along with Chris, number fifty five. Uh, Ashley caught a line drive. Uh, hit by a guy while playing third, caught it for an out. Uh, Marley in the outfield, caught a pop fly for an out in right center field. Overall, the team uh, was just absolutely on fire, uh, hitting well over 600. And again, the final score, 18-0. to zero. So uh, Team Doomcast is doing, uh, doing very, very well. And we have uh, more pitchers and whatnot that I'm supposed to be getting tomorrow of the entire team sporting their Doomcast.com in the very cool zombie green with uh, Soviet red lettering all over the face of it. So uh, Team Doomcast is doing very well. They're very eye-catching. Eye-burner yeah. is what They're I popping. think of. They're we should pop- sell them. We should. we should. I should get some. You know, for these people who are dumping 100 bucks, and we'll, and we'll, we'll get into those here pretty quick, too, uh, toward, uh, toward our effort. And, you know, thank you very much, and we'll get your names out here shortly, the first name at least. Um, we should be – I should get some here just so I can kick them out to them. You know, hundred dollar donation. I can give a shirt. That ain't a problem, right? Absolutely. I don't know yeah. if, I mean, if people want them. We, we should we should have a store. We should yeah, build I a agree. store. We already have the the e commerce, so something we should yeah. just do. And you know, it, I was talking with uh, producer Craig about producer the Craig. Show. We just dropped a Jew cast on me. Hilarious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's dropping stuff on me here. I haven't looked. There's something yeah. uh, that our, our boy probably... Craig. Our boy Craig has been extremely under the weather. And, uh, you know, with, so have you, so is everybody. Oh, it's a grand yeah. conspiracy. How can it everybody is. I know across the world, Craig brought this up, be yeah. sick at the same time? I've got a, a sister in. You know uh, what they call it, right? Chemtrails. No, it's the menorah virus. The menorah virus? See what I'm doing there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ADL. <laughs> Abe Foxman's going to be calling. I don't like what you're doing over there with that Doomcast show. If it wasn't so minimalistic and uh, underappreciated, I might say something about it. Uh, I, people that just listen to this for the first time are going to think I am a Jew basher. No, from- no. I mean, the, 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 this, it's a sweep. It's two, there's two things here, okay? There are the people that are just uh, completely over-the-top upset with globalization, 
what's yep. happening with the banking sector. They see the oh. people and they look at their last name and there's like, oh man, these are a lot of Bergs. No, there's a lot of Steens here. There's a lot of, uh, you know, Owitzes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it becomes, a, it becomes a row. I mean, look at what's happening in Greece. When you have an economic depression, you always have right-wing extremism. And yeah. it's because... You know, well, what's happening in the Ukraine? I don't know. Got a Jewish guy named Yatsenik. Uh, he's the prime minister. Got a bunch of money from a bunch of Jewish people from the IMF. And they're working with Victoria Noodleman, who's another Jewish lady that works. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So you start to say, well, damn, these people look like there's a look like there's a cabal of people and they all happen to be Jewish. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it, in, it's not that that's so incorrect because it actually is correct. There's plenty of people, but. In any kind of political power vacuum, any of them can be replaced. You have people like Pelosi that, are, that you know, she's a high priestess Jesuit. So mm-hmm. we're, we're not just banging on those groups. And you say, oh, well, she's controlled by them. But but here's the truth. The, the real, real sad aspect is that the reason it's become such a huge issue is because of the economic disparages. And this is what happened uh, during World War II. This is what brought a uh, Hitler... To power, speaking, yeah, and is going to again. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, and so you, you look at what's happening in France. There, and see, this is the other thing that's kind of sinister. They're having all the elections in Europe right now, and they're saying, well, if you're part of the Independent Party or the UKIP Party or uh, even the Golden Dawn Party, that these people are racists and okay. that they're they're all anti Semites. But there, most of these groups are not. You know, there are factions that are probably, uh, you know, slightly racist. But many of these are nationalists. They want sovereignty. They want independence. And 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 you can tell that the EU. I mean, it is it is on its. Uh, if it, I don't know if it's ever had as much stress upon the framework as it does right now because yeah, of all and, of the austerity failures, because yeah. of central planning. So, you know, I look at the actions and I look at the results and I, I look at the people individually and the policies that they're following more, more, more broadly, regardless of whether they're Catholic, Christian, Muslim. If they are still following these same policies, the end result will always be the same. Yeah, no, I agree, Doug. You're, yeah, it's well, well put. And, uh, uh, you know, you can throw the Catholics in there. I think you might just add you can throw the, ch- the Catholic Church in there. Uh, uh, along with several other groups that uh, that fall into the blame game, but let's let's just call them what they are: the bankers. black pope, the black pope. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the bankers, Vatican bankers, bankers. Or- and, and I don't care what you know where where their uh, what their history is uh, or religion or nationality. Uh, you know, th- this cabal that you speak of, um, you know, they're the ones, the technocrats that are that are facilitating all this misery and suffering around the world. And, you know, in, in this vacuum, in, in instability, right, in a, what is it, W-O-R-L, world uh, or without rule of law, inevitably you get the worst of, uh, uh, of uh, humanity, in, in a lot of cases, anyway, filling that vacuum. And what's going on in Ukraine now is a prime example of it, that uh, uh, the right sector, uh, who's uh, the Western, we're back in these jokers, right? They are neo-Nazis. They are anti-Semitic, and uh, they definitely uh, have an agenda that uh, is going to be reminiscent of what we saw in the 20s, 30s, and 40s in uh, Nazi Germany. Um, and and that, that is on the march, man. It's on the march. Uh, it's on the march in our own country. So wait till you see, you know, wait till you see the nationalism uh, start to roll out in 2016, 2014 to 2016, as we're already starting to see Doug Owen. Yeah, well, you know, you uh, are, of course, correspondent from time to time with RT, and yep. uh, this week you had an interview, and uh, I sent you a picture uh, of the Doomcast studio, where we broadcast out of. I did. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was debating whether, look, here's the deal, uh, and, and and Craig knows this, because me and Craig... Me and Craig talk to each other. We both have Skype on our phone, and we're we, and we're so and we're both into Russian guns, big time. So um, him and I are in and we're up comrades. chatting. We're comrades. Das Vidanya. Uh, we end up chatting all the time, and I let him know, and he so he knows. I mean, press TV every single night. They 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 send me a message to come on. <laughs> they, they they keep asking me at two in the morning. Would you like to come on? I'm like, no. yeah, that's my fault. And just so you know, <laughs> so and Eric Lovely, uh, host on Wide Awake News Radio, uh, and Craig, 
I, I, I sick those guys on all three of you. I, I and I think actually it's probably that's press all TV I need to be is on Iranian TV. They're going to come and get us, Charlie yeah. McGrath, before well, too long. Well, you know what? It, the honestly, trade unionist I'm, I'm and in, then Charlie McGrath and Doug Owen and the Doomers out there. So enjoy this show while it lasts before we be, you know. Get, yeah, get I'm embarrassed to say that that I, I really I I gave it a good solid five minutes consideration when you know when it pops up on on your Skype, you know, <laughs> yeah. Tehran, Iran. <laughs> you start and thinking about that. You're like, mm, Tehran. Okay, Tehran. the NSA is probably picking up on this. And, uh, oh, I'm man. thinking, yeah. Yeah. Bad enough that it, bad enough when it when it was Moscow, uh, Moscow when it was you know not so heated. But I'm sure even now anything that uh, is you know bit back. I mean, come on, who well, am I kidding? Thanks for thinking of me, Charlie McGrath. Sorry, I, I want one of those Webster Tarpley uh, disembodied head icons that they use yeah. on press TV because it's the only way I could do that. Is you know because I, I obviously. For uh, the Why? listeners out Why, there. Owen? Why? I was not. I was not going to bust your nuts on this because uh, have you seen the background in this crazy? Oh, room who that cares? I mean? Have you seen some of the people that they? I mean, you yeah. know, <laughs> sit in front of a window. You know, let the, let the nature be your background. Ooh, that might you know? be nice. Yeah, I, gotta, but, I do have a window over here. It's a nice window. And, and I mean, if you don't want to do it, that that's fine. I mean, just some people don't want to be on camera, and that uh, who cares? That's that's your that's your uh, your deal. And you, it isn't like you've ever pestered me. Hey, get me on here, there, the other thing. So um, I, I did it just more more because I believe you have a lot to say, and you do a good job saying it. So they said Aww. to me, "Hey, do you know anybody else we could?" And I'm like, "You betcha, Doug Owen." <laughs> Nice. And, and like I said, Eric and uh, Craig, who's been on my program a couple times now, uh, very well spoken. So I thought, yeah, these guys will do a good job representing America. Represent America. Russians. Yeah, but the first time I, I think I told this uh, on Doomcast, the first time they called me, it was a yeah. I battled, I battled with their burka wearing lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. She's like, so yeah. don't all Americans need to be disarmed, Mr. McGrath? Obviously, you have too much gun violence. So what? Are, you, you know, going back, what did I miss out on? What was the conversation? Did you hook up with RT? Um, uh, RT and I had a little tiff. What? Uh, yeah, we had a little tiff. Why? Uh, well, I'm going to tell you some stories now. Inside baseball, when when it comes to RT and press TV, okay. And and I really don't care, you know, if they picked up uh, and listened to Doomcast. Uh, 42, and found that I said some things that were disparaging about either one of them. And, and the truth of the matter is they don't. I mean, the the producers in both cases are interested in filling a five-minute segment, and they're just so busy trying to do that that I'm sure that they don't pay attention to much else. Uh, but uh, RT, uh, I, I don't know how many times I've been on there. I've tried to calculate it, and it's it's over 100. And the, the last couple times, uh, and I'm in the 100 times, I'm going to say... 20% of them, they would would not send a link. And I'd ask for them, please send me a link. And you we know, thought that there was a conspiracy because, uh, because you know, obviously you, you, they, they cut out the show where you had mentioned my name. So I thought, yeah, obviously, right. the CIA is after Doug Owen. Or, or RT. You know, Putin doesn't like you because of the negative things you've said about his, the motherland. The Putin nanny. The Putin nanny. <laughs> Putin so, nanny comments, uh, yes. Well, and, and that the, the cutting things out thing, or the, the that wasn't a cutting out. They decided not to use that because it was in a weekly uh, talk program they had. Sure, they, sure, sure. So anyway, that that wasn't a cutout. That was just all the, altogether not used. Right. But they they had not done what they said they were going to do, which is send me some links. And it's truly, you know, it, it if I get their link, I upload it on my YouTube channel with their link, so they get credit for the views. They get any advertising they have, they get it. Um, but when they don't send it, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I kind of forget about it. But you know, the other side of it is this message that I'm going on there for. It's important to me, and it's important to me that that I not only am saying it to the people in Moscow that are hearing it. More importantly, it's that I can get up and say it to the people in this country, the people I'm trying to to speak to, and I have been for uh, since 2008 on that YouTube channel. So it annoyed me that. I'm coming on there multiple times a week, and they're not sending me these links for whatever reason. And so I had said to her, uh, and she's great. I mean, the one, the, the one producer who contacts me all the time, I said, look, she asked me to be on there, and I'm like... Your CIA uh, handler, obviously. My handler, right, right. And, you know, she's great. And she's like, look, uh, can you come on there? And I'm like, I'm going to have to decline because of this reason. I, I'm just not getting 
you know, the, the media sent to me. And I said, to be honest with you, uh, if I can't promote it, then there's really no reason to come on there. And I don't know if, if that sounds snarky uh, to bit. listeners. <laughs> well, it does. But, but understand, look, understand this. It, it, the, they get a benefit out of having their guests come on there, obviously. Right now, and RT's been great about not trying to prep me and you know get my point of view beforehand. They'll they'll give me a topic and that's it. Um, and so they've been very very fair and very very willing to broadcast exactly what I say. But they they also you know they they get a benefit from from people like me and others that get on there and and give them this content and asking them you know to for a link. I don't think is that uh, that much trouble, especially considering. That these interviews are, uh, you know, anywhere from five minutes beforehand to an hour beforehand. They're just gonna, you know, hey, can you come on here and talk about this? Bam! So you drop what you're doing and you you get to, uh, you know, go on and try to sound intelligent about whatever topic you're talking about. Right. So if it sounds snarky, I apologize. It's pro quo. You, you know, that you're doing something for them. They should at least return the favor. If it, they should, I, I mean, imagine this. What if I had you on my podcast and I just never put it up? I never, uh, we didn't record this. We didn't put it on the website. I just had you for an hour and we just talked. And sure, it may and, or may not go out. There's no guarantee. Well, and if you told me, if you got me as a guest on your program saying, "Hey, when it's all done, I'm going to send you a link and you can promote it wherever you want." And honestly, as you being Doug Owen, it's going to benefit you too to have somebody that was a guest promote the program that was just on there, right? So you you want that person to have the link. But if you if you got me on saying, well, we're gonna have a thousand listeners live uh, for your for your program and then uh, I'll send you the link and you can, you know, have another ten thousand listeners after that, then yeah, that's gonna be one of the reasons that brings me on there. And then if you don't do it, well guess what? I'm never coming back on. Yeah. I I don't think it's that snarky. I think that at some point you have to draw the line. Or just okay, there's continue. more to the story, though. There's more okay, to the story. Okay, so, so what was the response? She was very apologetic, and I felt kind of bad because I was kind of snippy in my email. Really? Um, I, don't, but, I couldn't believe that. Yeah, truly, that happened. <laughs> and, and I said to her, I got an idea. Why don't you put me on the payroll and give me a weekly program on there, and then I'll be at the beck and call uh, uh, on these interview requests. And it, that was more of a joke after the fact than anything else, and I, I worded it exactly like that. And uh, and she sends me back. That might very well be a possibility. So we might be having a, a, a Doomcast slash whatever we call it uh, weekly program on RT, Doug Owen. It's going to be way better than Adam versus the man, although that was okay. Well, we'll wait and see if it happens. First of all, they might well, say, you I'm know what? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just okay. Saying. Well, here's the, here's the deal with Press TV, which you and, uh, you and uh, Craig and Eric need to understand. <laughs> they do want to know your point of view. Uh, they've already you quizzed play. me. This guy got a hold of me yeah. from Press TV. Here's more inside yeah. baseball. And he's like, so what do you think about guns? And I'm like, I'm for them. And what do you think about U.S. Uh, policy? And I said, uh, I'm, an in, I'm a non-interventionalist, so usually I'm against it. And they're like, perfect, that's great. As long as you hate America, that is wonderful. It's yep. like, well, you know, I mean, it's not... It, it, it's not that I hate America or I'm anti-American by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just not for the current policies of some of the, you know, uh, Fortune 500 Wall Street bankster cronies that happen to be occupying uh, very powerful positions in government. I think those people need to be held accountable. But uh, anyway, so, it, you know, not to knock them or anything else. I understand that, uh, you know, they... Uh, they they're a counterweight. They're the voice of America for Iran, and yeah. you know, but they they lay it on a little too heavy. You know, well, they really, it, they, they I mean, press TV like RT has, uh, and I'm just going to say this because I don't think they're going to listen or care. Um, RT has real journalistic integrity and yes. quality, and there are uh, real uh, defamation lawsuits that could arise if they're just putting out total bull crap. So I had you know, to say. That they're more legitimate. I, I don't know about that, but they they definitely do a better job vetting. The the bias is is more. Uh, it's it's at least maybe understood, but not nearly as overt and <laughs> direct as press TV. Press TV borders on, you know, anti American propaganda. For no, it doesn't the border. It's it's fully it's fully uh, on. It's full on yeah. uh, anti American propaganda and. 
you know, I, the more I guess I think about them, the more I'm like, mm, I don't know if I no, maybe. you I, I, I and what I told the what I told the producer and and he's actually just Skyping back and forth with him. Seems like a decent guy. Yeah. And and uh, you, and they didn't vet me before they had me on that first episode or whatever. First after interview you, after you busted her balls, they vetted me. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, yeah, they did. And that's funny that they asked you about gun control. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I got. The, I, I should. Uh, I'll send you the the transcript from the newsroom. Oh up. yeah, that's what they call it, the newsroom. But uh, since then, he asked me ahead of time, and I, you know, I'm not. And and they've hinted to would I change, you know, would I would I go this way on a topic? And I've just said, you know what, if you can use me, I'll, I'll tell you my point of view beforehand, and if you can use it, fine. But if if you can't, you know, d- don't ask me to change it because I'm not gonna, and that's just creepy. Yeah. And so my my, you know, I, I kind of see the old Soviet in my mind's eye. I see the old <laughs> Soviet system where you have a political officer sitting there with a you know nine millimeter <laughs> next to the you waiting you know, for presenter. McCarthy or Hoover to pop on over to the front door. Hey, Mr. McGrath, we'd like to talk no, I, about you and uh, the Iranian friends well, you have. Oh, geez. Well, that, that is very, you know, very much a real possibility. But I, I, I was speaking to, I, I imagine this producer in the quote, air quote, newsroom uh, <laughs> has a political officer hanging out there. I think it's CIA, it's CIA central casting. This guy is at uh, Langley or you know, somewhere you in Virginia. Hear, maybe. Maybe uh, you would think, though, Doug, the, that. I'm just saying. Press- I know what you're just saying, yeah. But you would think that the that press TV would be more effective if they they had the model of like RT, where they said, you know what, we're going to be we're a legitimate news organization. We are going to look for people that that are not happy with our you know adversaries. In this case, would be the U.S. and we'll bring them on, and more likely than not, they're gonna you know they're gonna say something that uh, supports their agenda. However, I think it lends credibility to any news organization, uh, and, and you know that that goes for the U.S. ones too. I think they 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 do this purposefully, which is get a counter point of view on there from time to time, just so they can give the you know the the appearance of legitimacy, a fair and balance. I hate to use the term fair and balance because it's you know a, a, a associated with Fox, which is anything but. America works for the synagogue of Satan more at nine. More at nine inches. Here's Press the deal. reports on evil. Hey, I got a couple things you want to get into. I, I know we're kind of pressed for time here, but I do have a couple things. I got things. a new gun. Sorry. Oh, you got a new gun? All right, let's do the segment. Wait. Well, uh, we, we, we can do a real story first. We can do a real news story first, but we'll hit that. We got to hit the, the contributors. Um, I want to talk a little bit about I am going to discontinue advertising, period, uh, Google on my YouTube videos. A lot of people are going to be happy to hear that. Mm, mm. Well, there has been breaking news from the Laura Poitras, Glenn Greenwald uh, intercept. Here we go. And there it is. And well, a new report reveals a national. Here we go. Well, a new go. report reveals the National Security Agency is recording every single phone call made in the Bahamas, even though the U.S. has said the Caribbean nation poses little to no threat to Americans. The story is based on documents leaked by Edward Snowden that describe a classified program called Somalget, which was put in place by the NSA without the knowledge or consent of the Bahamian government. Instead, the website The Intercept reports the agency seems to have obtained access through the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. One uh, NSA document says the overt purpose for recording calls in the Bahamas is, quote, for legitimate commercial service. But the same document adds, quote, our covert mission is the provision of SIGINT, or signals intelligence. Documents released by Snowden show the system is part of a broader program known as MISTIC, which also monitors the telephone communications in Mexico, the Philippines, Kenya, as well as one other country, which the Intercept says it's not naming in response to specific credible concerns that doing so could lead to increased violence. Hmm. Okay, so we've got the Bahamas. Edward Snowden has released, doc- well, actually, the documents that Glenn Greenwald have from the data uh-huh. dump uh-huh. that he received from Edward Snowden are pointing to the U.S.'s involvement in, in basically uh, the Bahamas, the rounding up all information, all telecommunication metadata, all communications through this uh, Somalget, and uh, it extends to a few other countries. Now, I thought this was interesting that there's one other country, but for whatever reason, 
uh, Glenn Greenwald has decided that that is not uh, a good idea. So uh, it gets me, you know, wondering. So first I thought Venezuela. We got a lot of problems down in Venezuela. You have the nationalization of the, uh, the, 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 the industries, and that hasn't turned well. Uh, you have pretty much a U.S.-funded uh, Freedom House uh, plan to destabilize the country and uh, mm-hmm. bloodshed violence and the like. So we already have a lot of violence. So it got me thinking. Two things here. So, you know, going back into, you know, the Edward Snowden thoughts that we have about him, I, I made a great case for him being an asset working directly for the CIA and uh, whether Glenn Greenwald is or not, uh, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But what's happening in the Bahamas? Well, the Bahamas is the offshoring banking syndicate for all of the CIA drug running money. Now, if you were part of the NSA or you're part of uh, uh, you know, some kind of intel gathering, you would have a lot of dirt, a lot of dirt on a lot of people if you knew every banking transaction, every phone call that went to those private banks in the Bahamas. So, you know, there's a lot of information there. So this is kind of a row. Uh, between uh, the NSA and the CIA. And I would bet that the CIA would want to expose this and to be able to subvert anyone being able to hold uh, the shenanigans of uh, South American drug dealing and the like uh, over the head, you know, you know, high department heads and others. That they are want in a the front run in each. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, why else would they be releasing this information? But then it got me really thinking about who the hell is this South American country that they don't want to talk about? And then it brought me to something big that's happening. Brazil. They have the, the Olympics the, or the, World Cup. The World Cup. So the FBI is down there training. I don't know if you heard about this, but they are working with Brazil on this new tech savvy uh, riot police headquarters, and of course uh-huh. they have Blackwater. <laughs> the Blackwater is there. If you haven't seen the RoboCop suits, you should check those out. They have these suits to protect the elite police, and I'll give you the the link here. Hold yeah, on. please Stop. do. I am. I don't think I've seen the RoboCop suits. Oh, these things are great. Copy. Hold on. I just Copy hit, oh. paste. What, what is their name now? What it isn't Z uh, Academia or Acad- the Academy? I can't say it. Academy. Academy? Just yeah, me. Okay. these uh, pictures are worth looking at. This suit. So I mean, just the 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 fear factor, the uh, you know, terrifying uh, robot. Oh my dog. god! It's like <laughs> oh my god! Are you serious? Yeah, it looks like it's out of a Star Wars movie, doesn't it? Oh, do we have that at Doomcast? We got to get that at Doomcast. That is absolutely. That's Darth Vader right there. Yeah. Well, I mean, in in just a year ago, one of the things that was happening in Brazil was uh, a million people plus were about to overthrow the government. Very similar to what happened in Ukraine. Though the people didn't turn violent, uh, but we did have some of the usual suspects, the black bloc there orchestrating violence during these teacher demonstrations and we had a lot of people that were just so upset about uh, the government intrusions into their lives, and, and a, so draw, draw. Get, let's get. I, I want you to draw the parallel uh, or the connection with the Bahamas, uh, because I'm very interested in your theories because uh, they either are very accurate or very entertaining, one or the other. Well, I think that that, that uh, Brazil is the country in question because um, you know they have uh, been working with Russia directly. Uh, to subvert the U.S., they're working on an undersea cable to skirt U.S. spying, and uh, the, the little sweetheart there, the revolutionista that is the president, has uh, ran on a campaign of running against the NSA. So, if come to find out uh, because of some leak that uh, you know she, she and her administration have been working hand in hand with the NSA, with the the intelligence agencies, and turning over. Uh, citizens information that's one country where you could get millions of people that are already upset about the injustices the grievances about building the world cup site uh, the removal Mm -hmm. of indigenous people uh, the the workers being uh, basically put in slave as conditions Uh, it it goes on and on so they can pimp out the world cup yeah no doubt about it so yeah i mean that's a recipe 
for uh, heads getting chopped off, no doubt. So uh, the selective uh, uh, choice of, of information being leaked seems to me to be another CIA revelation. I just think it kind of lends a little bit of credence to the hypothesis that Edward Snowden could be, uh, and maybe even Laura Poitras and Glenn Greenwald, uh, releasing this information in a timely manner uh, for uh, political for political means, be, you know, and, and steering the, the fa- narrative. No doubt about it. The fabulously now wealthy Glenn Greenwald, uh, not oh, yeah. not meaning not <laughs> meaning that wealth is. Uh, he, he might uh, be hiding a few bucks in the Bahamas. You never know. I mean, uh, <laughs> very, very well could be. Yeah, I, and it and it does. You know, you're talking NSA and and conjecture, uh, people conjecture, but uh, something w- worth noting. But with the Bahamas. I mean, it, it only makes sense. You know, people are like, well, there's no terrorism there, so why would the U.S. government? It's like, stop asking stupid questions that have easy answers. It's because all of the CIA drug running, all of these banks that were laundering money during the 2008 scandal and prior, uh, probably even the Vatican has extensions and banks that are in the Bahamas. It's, it's, like, it, it's the next big target because the Swiss banks have just had to recently... Credit Suisse this week had to pay a $2.6 billion fine for helping Americans and others to shore uh, their money in these tax havens. So this is a lot of leverage over a lot of really powerful people. It's a huge power play, and, and now uh, th- you know, they could selectively use this information and keep it over the heads of, of those people that uh, you know may not want to may want to be a whistleblower, may want to turn state's evidence, may already, you know, have a national security letter gagging them. So uh, I I just, I find it really interesting that uh, all of this is coming out now. And and just, you know, it's kind of brings us uh, forward because a few years ago I was banging the drum on the U.S. government spending millions of dollars on the Mexican telecommunication infrastructure under the Department of Homeland Security. I said at the time, I mean, this is to, 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 to update and be able to control the Sonoa cartel, to, to be able to assassinate, just like General Hayden said, with metadata. Oh, I think I lost Charlie here for a moment. He's calling me back, <laughs> calling me back during Good. a great rant. There we go. Hey, there, everybody. That, that was, uh, you know, every time you hit the nail on the head, this happens. Y- you know, and I hate to be that conspiracy theorist that just thinks. Quit hitting the nail on the head. Yeah, and, it, and Skype's doing weird things. Thank you. Yeah, is it your end or mine? Because I was hmm. solid. No, it's um, just weird. I, whenever I, I miss a call, I get this one six six one number, and I don't know what it is. And I think it could be a. I've got some some of hmm. these numbers kind of routing around. I've got hmm. the the Skype going to the Google, going to the it's going the to the AOL, hotline. going over here, <laughs> going over there. Got a lot of things. But anyway, um, you know, some other notable things that are uh, pretty wild. I mean, wait a minute. But before we but I, I, I do want to, you know, because you were talking about the 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 uh, listening of conversations. And, you know, it brings me to the you know, well, one of the other of- things about Brazil. You know, they are working to set up their own IMF with Russia. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there's a lot of other things. They've also been very anti Monsanto. They uh, they had a. Uh, well, they had a plan, and I don't know if I actually disagree with this one to to release uh, genetically modified mosquitoes, but uh, they have been going hard against Bayer Pharmaceuticals and other uh, big agri companies. So, um, you know that, that that's why I think they're kind of an X factor in this because they are they are the you know the part of the the the, the brick nations. They are the yeah. the big the big what if in, in brick. No doubt about it. I, I, I think your theory is sound, without a doubt. I, I do want, before we, uh, before we wrap up, I do want to talk about something a little closer to home, but on the same, uh, on, in the same scope. You know, the, the Snowden revelation, be it legitimate or contrived, uh, definitely brought about what? It brought around uh, a little bit of uh, uh, hype in establishment media. And, and as you and I have talked, I think, uh, you know, Th- that hype was generated for a reason. It was to, to, you know, immerse slowly the people in this country into the fact that this isn't going anywhere. This is the tactic, and uh, get used to it. Um, and we saw Doug. Are you with me still? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Okay, okay. D- <laughs> with bated wow, breath. Wow, baited up, man. Here we go. Uh, this week we had the USA Freedom Act. 
Mm-hmm. You, you all you all down with this? Yes. Is this the yeah. uh, uh, basically J- uh, J- James Simpson in this a bill? It is. It is James Simpson Brenner, uh, who is the same author of the Patriot Act. You know, the, another Orwellian titled uh, piece of legislation that has nothing has the exact opposite effect of its name. Right. You're not a pat- You know, you're not a patriot for supporting the Patriot Act. Unless you know you're you're uh, unless you believe that turning your country into a police state's patriotic. Well, the USA Freedom Act uh, was supposed to be the result of the revelation of Snowden and the end to mass collection of, of data. James Simpson Brenner writes this thing. Uh, it's got bilateral support. Both the left, the blue team, and the red team are all for it. The way it is, it it would end this mala- this uh, mass uh, collection of data. But uh, after passing the Senate, making its way uh, to, to the House for consideration, it uh, is absolutely gutted by the House Judiciary and uh, the intelligence community uh, to the point where it's nothing more than uh, legislation in name only. I mean, it really doesn't do anything. It, it has uh, some, uh, some aspect of it that, uh, that it tries to limit but the terms that are used in it are so vague. I mean, it's like an ND, it's like a National Defense Authorization Act. It's so vague in what it describes in the NDAA what a terrorist is that you and I could easily be considered one. Well, the same thing with the USA Freedom Act. Man, you, you know, what kind of moron would you have to believe uh, to be to believe uh, to, to even hear this and not wretch? It's the USA Freedom Act, man. God bless America. Yeah. I mean, that, that's I, I hear these things and it makes me think of just the you have to be the dumbest SOB to believe that these things uh, are that these titles mean anything other than the exact opposite of what they say. So because of the fact that it was completely gutted, you have the Center for Democracy and Technology, Harley uh, Geiger, who was all for it because it, it eliminated the NSA's ability. Uh, he's off board. He's not supporting it anymore. The New American Foundation, Kevin Bankton, he w- was a staunch supporter. He jumped ship. Amy Stepanovich from another organization for uh, uh, for the uh, uh, advancement of technology and exchange of information uh, was on board. Now she's off uh, off the wagon, the bandwagon for it. So basically, in a nutshell, while we're talking about other things in this country and paying attention to pop culture, USA Freedom Act uh, comes to light. Obama is going to call this a success. It's supposed to, uh, you know, counter, uh, uh, well, not counter, but uh, stem some of the uh, collection of your information. And it's not going to do anything. It's not going to do a damn thing other than legitimize the acts of these alphabet intelligence agencies, Doug Owen. Well, yeah, and they just repassed NDAA. Congress reaffirms yeah. definite detention of Americans under NDAA. There's one guy, uh, a ranking member named Smith, Adam Smith, who's a Dem in Washington. <laughs> he said he said some stuff on the floor like this right here. Mr. Chairman, I yield myself two minutes. The gentleman from Washington is recognized for two minutes. This amendment would eliminate indefinite detention in the United States and its territory. What? So basically anybody that we no, captured who we suspected of terrorist activity would no longer be subject to indefinite detention as is now currently the law. And the basic <laughs> reason for this is our Constitution Nobody wants to works. hear this. Turn this guy off. Oh my God. He's talking about indefinite detention not being good, stripping you of your citizenship whenever they want to under... Some arbitrary thing. I can't believe they're letting this guy go on. Because of the 2001 AUMF, we still have on the books a law that would allow the president, any president now or in the future, to indefinitely detain any person in the United States. Conspiracy theory, crazy people, those wacky doom casters. I don't even. Yep. I don't even think this guy's real. He's from CIA Central Casting. <laughs> He's a relief valve. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I'll take it one one step further. I mean, look at these poor bastards in Gitmo. You know, they've been there a dozen years, man. Some of these guys uh, are, you know, they're getting old uh, being indefinitely detained. Now, you know, we're finding out that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them are, are being just grotesquely force fed uh, because they just want to die. They just, you know, they're, they're, they're tired of, uh, uh, you know, can you imagine that, Doug, being indefinitely detained? Uh, can mm-hmm. you imagine that the, the mind uh, effing that you'd get not knowing ever? If it's ever going to end, is there any hope? Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, even if you know you're going to be there forever, at least you know. 
uh, right. but, you know, the things that we're doing, the things that are, I shouldn't say we're doing, I should say in a, in a more poignant way, the things that are happening in our name, in your name, um, are absolutely horrendous. And, and the, the notion that the same exact things that are happening to the dudes at Gitmo, that, that uh, you know, the, these terrorists that we're creating, the same things that's happening to them can happen to you. It can happen to you in the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can be thrown in a hole, never to be heard from again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's sick. No. And what happens to you in that hole? I, I, I've got another, one more story I, I definitely want to talk about with you because it is just unbelievable. I think you know about it. It's this uh, dude in Florida, 50-year-old dude with uh, a 55-year-old, I believe, with mental illness, right? And he's in jail for uh, an, yet another victimless crime being plugged into the system, uh, into the corporate uh, prison program. Uh, he was caught with some cocaine. Um, oh, no. Yeah, co- he had a little coke on him. So he's in jail in Florida. They, uh, This is unbelievable. They cook him. They boil him to death uh, with uh, shooting boiling water onto him. Yeah, now I saw that. The, they cooked him. They, they boiled him. this guy. They literally boiled him. Yeah. Now, what he did was, I mean, he's mentally ill. That's been established. Um, he defecated it. It doesn't I don't matter care if he's, he's a cocaine dealer or if he's even well, a murderer. My, my point is that he shouldn't even be he shouldn't be in prison if he's mentally ill. Uh, you know he he needs to be in a hospital. Uh, you know for the insane or whatever. But uh, first of all, we I mean that's a whole other program. This victimless crime shouldn't uh, you know he shouldn't have been there in the first place. But mentally ill, crapped in his cell, and uh, they decided to teach him a lesson. So they they hosed him down with boiling water. To the point where he died, they literally cooked him to death. I know. Yeah, I saw it. I posted it today. It was just one of those stories. It's kind of you just can't believe it, but it goes into the bag of Florida stories. The craziest things that I find on the internet, stuff that you just can't believe really happen. It happens often in Florida. No and I'm sorry. I, I mean, we got we got a huge amount of doomers in the Florida uh, state. Yeah, I mean, Florida has a lot of people that listen to alternative media and and i like florida i kind of think of florida as a cousin or a brother to texas when you go to <laughs> when you go there it's like oh man i feel like i'm at home i feel like i'm uh right right out here the with middle a bunch part of, of florida the middle part of florida kind of scares me my sister used to live in port charlotte ah uh, yeah that's scary <laughs> well no port, port charlotte was awesome man right down there on the gulf coast i would go down there in you know about march or so when it was just getting tired of the cold and go hang out there for a week or so uh, but I I took a drive once. I ran a marathon up in my aunt, no in uh, uh, Tampa, and I drove through the interior of the state, and it was kind of you know, different, a little bit different. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, you can find some pretty different places in Texas or Alabama or any you know anywhere. Montana, anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Not, not slam it's, in Florida. I'm just saying it. It's completely different than the the coasts because the coasts are so. You know, popular and, and well. If you go to the Texas Gulf Coast, uh, there are some pretty raggedy places. You know, yeah. it's just kind Beaumont. of yeah, yeah. It, it, Been there. Beaumont is. I mean, I I don't want to bang on Beaumont. I know people from Beaumont, but it's pretty dirty. I mean, it's like near Texas City and a lot of other. Yeah. Uh, it's just dirty. Lots of industry, <laughs> lots of factories, lots and lots of oil wells, gas wells, refineries. Well, not as many yeah. refineries, but, you know, there's still a lot of industry. It's kind of I think dirty. I went there in June, and it was so unbelievably hot and humid. And, and it's, you know, if, oh, yeah. if I think of Texas, I think of where you're at, Austin, dry and, and deserty, you know, and, and Beaumont is not any of that. Austin it is, is not dry nor deserty, but that's oh. okay. Well, well, <laughs> well, wait a minute. What is it? Is it humidity? It's got rolling hills, hill country. We would have a pine forest Whatever. not too far from here. I'm, I'm dead serious. You have, squ- you have square wheels. And we get, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, toupee, Charlie McGrath, toupee. <laughs> a toupee, I love it. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we have, uh, I mean, just recapping a little bit, uh, we have uh, NSA uh, kind of corral the wagons, and, and you're thinking Brazil uh, might, be, might be in the crosshairs. Flashpoint, I- yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a great theory. We have uh, a watered-down USA Freedom Act, which is nothing of the sort, and we have uh, prisoners being boiled alive 
in Florida where all the weird crap happens. And it isn't just, uh, I mean, with elections, Right, I, I mean, I got this Donald it, Donald Sterling thing, but it's not oh, quick, yeah. and I, I don't know. I think we might. No, let's do it. Let, let's 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 just do it because it's. Uh, All right. Well, anyway, I mean, what's what's happening now is that a lot of people are getting nervous. A lot of people are starting to look into Donald Sterling, not the not the uh, the, the racist idiot that he is, or the misogynist, or all of the other women that he has given money to but they're starting to look at him as a businessman you know this guy how did he end up with an nba franchise how did he end up being a a billionaire because he doesn't seem to be that that savvy well you start looking into his businesses and daniel hopsicker he is one of the last great investigative journalists see he's like john rapaport uh he, he 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 runs mad cow morning news if you google that you'll find it i'm gonna have this attached to the, the show notes, but he did a great expose looking into the history of Donald Sterling and how he did business. A lot of his condos or the, uh, the slumlording, he would only take cash money. Uh, he, he's had so many different uh, business partners that were tied to the mob. You, you have to really uh, <laughs> turn a blind eye to some of the people that he's a, a good friend with. You ever seen the movie Casino? Yes. Okay, do you remember Kevin? Pol- you remember Kevin Pollock's role? He he played Alan Glick. Um, he was the, he he was the guy that was the front man for Robert De Niro, uh, Lefty Rosenthal. He was the guy. Who oh, was gotcha, the, gotcha, gotcha. He was yeah. the lawyer, and that's how he got to start. Uh, well, he was a ambulance chaser. Well, uh, best buds with Alan Glick. So Ooh. that is who uh, Mr. Donald Sterling is. So the story goes on. You start looking into the people that he was working with. This guy had created a bunch of different partners. He was in business relationships with, remember Al Davis, the, yep. the Raiders owner, recently yep. uh, passed away. Whenever he was moving uh, the uh, uh, franchise, the NFL team from Los Angeles, from Oakland to Los Angeles, um, the ties that Al Davis had to uh, the mob were not allowed to be brought up. Uh, there was a judge, and uh, the judge's allegiance is uh, very questionable, but uh, basically uh, the, the Justice Department's organized crime and racketeering section uh, was called in to, to look at this. So a little of the backstory. Basically, in a nutshell, Donald Sterling is one of the biggest mafioso uh, mob men that, well, maybe he's not, but he is fronting and his business, his whole empire, it looks like is nothing less than a huge shell for the mob. Mm. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You and I and a few other people in the world that listen to Doomcast know this. The few that read Daniel Hopsicker's piece here, and I've shared it with our producer and, and others, and and I'll give, I, I'll, I'll give you the link to it. It's a great read. The ties to Jack Ruby, even uh, Adam. What? Yeah, yeah. He wow. Came, yeah, he came from the same neighborhood. And Jack Ruby. Do you know what Jack Ruby's real name was? Nope. Rubenstein. Of course. <laughs> Naturally. Uh, I had it here in, in the notes here. <laughs> uh, AKA Jacob Rubenstein, Jack Ruby. Just to you know to to throw uh, throw that into the mix as I look for. Wait, no, that's not right. I'm, there we go. Um, there it is. There's the appropriate thing. Yeah, so the whole thing is that the story about him and his ties to the mob, the shell, and all the other people, including the CIA and other mobsters that were working with the CIA, even the JFK backstory, uh, uh, really do uh, make sense. So is sense. this going somewhere? I mean, is there going to well, be... Well, the thing. I mean, USA Today said, if you don't get out of here, that you're going to face scrutiny. You know, there's been some veiled uh, threats Threats. to Donald Sterling because if the media starts looking into this guy and they already are because it's such a big story and everybody's like, you know, this guy, how did he even get here? It doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't get one point eight billion dollars running slums. There ain't nothing happening to this guy. There ain't nothing happening. Or or what does he know? And okay, there's two things that could be happening. One. No, there's three things. One, it's exactly as it is. Crazy old guy. Uh, got compromised by his uh, Asian, black, whatever she is, girlfriend that uh, he didn't want to have sex with other 
black NBA stars because it uh, offended him. He said it was okay. No, actually, he didn't want her taking pictures. He said that she could have sex with him on and on and on. Is that the story? Or, or so you just take it at face value. Or you can say, well, this guy is obviously being compromised. You know, and the crazy things that he's saying really make him seem like a whack nut. So if he did have some information that could turn state's evidence, if he could be uh, a witness or bring, uh, you know, something to the table uh, in an indictment, then pretty much this whole fiasco has ruined any credibility that he has whatsoever. So a you're character, thinking maybe, you're character thinking assassination. Maybe he's, been he's been spitzered here? He might be spitzered. This could be a spitzer. And huh. the question of whether he'll be a spitzer or not is, and we're going to go ahead and take the macabre bet here, or you know, make our predictions, does Donald Sterling live? Now, he's already 80, so he could just die, and it would be yeah. easy to whack him because, oh, yeah. you know, hit him with a heart attack shot, hit him with a heart attack gun. We know those are real. <laughs> they are real. Absolutely, the heart attack gun. Yeah, the church commission brought out those heart attack guns and cancer guns. Oh, that's, my next, that's my next purchase. He should get you one of those. I need a new gun. I need a new heart attack gun. <clears throat> so, um, See, it's working already. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> no, uh, I wonder sometimes. <clears throat> now, you know, and that's the other thing. Here in uh, Central Texas, we all have tons of allergies. Why does everybody in the area have allergies? Because it's so wooded. We have so many trees, so much pollen. It's, it's unreal. Uh, you'll have to come down here and visit. You'll enjoy I, it. I definitely do. And I want to touch on... And, anyway, and if, he, got, if he dies, then we know. And if he then, doesn't yeah. die, then I, I, I don't still... think that proves anything, though. Do you? I mean, the, the, I mean, if they if they can make it to where he's completely discredited or he's completely shunned, then uh, whatever information that he has that he was going to use is irrelevant at that point. I don't think they got to necessarily. But maybe they him. have to whack him because he's just old and crazy now. Oh, he's going to start talking. He's well, that could be that. Could be that. Yeah, well, I, I guess know. time will tell. We need to be um, on the uh, Donald Sterling uh, suicide watch. Craig wanted me to make sure that I talked a little bit about, and, and I really do got to bail out of here really quickly, but uh, the fact that, and you touched on it, everybody's been sick. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it is everywhere. Do you think it's just a, a bad pollen year or chemtrails? Chemtrails. There you go. There it is. All there right. it is, Craig. It's chemtrails. <laughs> Probably so. Uh, oh. New gun. Dun, dun, da, da. Oh, a Mosin Nagant. Now, this is Craig's fault. He's got me into Russian guns, him and uh, Eric Lovely. Um, Mosin Nagant uh, M44. It's a, uh, for those that, that know what they are, you, you already, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, a Mosin Nagant is a world, well, it, it's a hundred year old uh, uh, bolt action rifle. Famous, made famous by the movie uh, Enemy at the Gate. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, no. The battle, it, it, well, it's a great movie. Battle of Stalingrad, uh, a little bit of a, a program about that. But it was uh, the famous rifle used by Vasily Zaitsev, a uh, Russian sniper who killed over 400 German uh, officers and uh, soldiers with a Mosin Nagant. And, you know, very prolific. There's millions and millions, I think. Uh, upwards of uh, 30 million of these things made you could it, it's the ultimate i mean I, I say that a lot but it is truly um a doomer rifle if so is this going to be the uh, you know I, I never gave you the compliment on putting that ar-15 uh the, the lower imagery with the doomcast logo on the doomcast.com site just one of the many things that gets kind of brushed to the side i was like oh man that's awesome i should say something to charlie about that wait a minute that was craig he the, you mean they had the receiver with the doomcast on there yeah, that was uh, Craig. He, uh, he photoshopped you credit, that. Undo credit. I should have known. Yeah, you should. Known. You should not be giving credit to Craig. <laughs> we got <give laughs> instead of not to, giving it to me. Did we give credit to uh, our fine sponsors? Not corporations. Not people that. Yeah, uh, we're going to do that right now. Um, and I'm, you know, uh, this is the second week running where we've had hundred dollar uh, uh, sponsors who have contributed. I mean, I say hundred each. Can went over and donated to Wide Awake News, and then went over to use uh, to your uh, uh, site and did it there as well. And I, I don't know what name. What do you mean, Lila and uh, Ivana? Yeah, and yeah. it's not the name they use the in the ladies, deal. The ladies from London. Yeah, I'm not sure if Ivana is definitely a lady or not. So you guys are gonna have to correct us on this. Is Ivana Ivana a lady or is that a dude? 
uh, Lila, I think we can assume we're probably wrong. It's probably Lila's a guy. No. Ivana is a, uh, <laughs> but they get, they gave a hundred dollars to each one of us. Uh, hi, Charlie. Thank you for your excellent rants. Uh, they are clear and, uh, they clear the stale air. Thank you. Uh, by the way, Bozeman, this is kind of cool. Bozeman, where I live, translate in Dutch as angry man. How appropriate. Many thanks, uh, my friend Lila and Ivana. So thank you guys. Uh, and Doug thanks you as well, I'm sure, for the, the contribution and the support. Yeah, they sent a, they sent a nice note to me as well. It says, uh, uh, great, hi, Doug. Great shows and news updates. Saves us a lot of precious time, so we will pay for your time. Many thanks again, my friend. Lila and Ivana. So that's the, model, that's the model that is the value for value, uh, just like last week when we got into, maybe not appreciated, the Gilbert Shaggery uh, uh, aspect to what's happening in Nigeria. We do get behind the headlines. You're not going to hear these Donald Stor- Sterling uh, stories anywhere else. Uh, we do put a lot of time in to uh, producing the shows and uh, even the post-production. So uh, we... we uh, we like this model. We don't want yeah. to have corporate sponsors. We don't want no, to have. I'm done, I'm yeah, done with the corporate sponsors. I, we don't want a Chipotle. We don't want Chipotle running this show. And uh, it, it's it's really uh, your show. And it keeps it completely honest, open, transparent. Uh, you you know where we're at, and you don't it, have a commercial every fifteen minutes, or have to you know be bombarded. I hate and, before before and we, we don't wrap- have to be bombarded. And we we can be completely honest. We can That's talk right. about inside baseball. We can tell you things that you're not going to hear anybody else talk about press TV or what happens behind the scenes at RT or any of these institutions that are are, are now becoming. Uh, more in the limelight, you get the back end stories to what's happening in the <laughs> activist world. You said back end. I want to thank uh, Dion W as well, uh, twenty dollars, and that was just uh, that was contributed today. Dion's thank you, Dion. A good guy, yeah. He's and a- we got one more. We got one more here from Reed. Reed gave us twenty dollars. Reed lives in Wyoming, United States, and Ooh, neighbor. he's my neighbor. Yeah, he's right down the road. You should say hi. Hi, D- hi. Maybe I'm have, a, say Dion. have a meetup. We could have a little confab. We call that out here in the West. A little Rocky Mountain confab. Get Rocky Mountain high, like John Maybe. Denver. Maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, Mundelein, Illinois is where Neon's from. I'm probably saying that wrong. Mundelein, Illinois. But, yeah, I, I concur with everything you said there. And what I'll do is uh, the topic of why I'm going to pull the plug uh, at, uh, at YouTube with the sponsor deal, uh, with the sponsor partnership program, I should say, um, I'll save that for next week. How about that? All right. I'll put it in the notes to do that. And yeah. Charlie McGrath, I want to thank you for the time. Thank you for all of the support. Please continue to tell people about Dunecast. It's the initiative that we put forward, the cognitive infiltration. Okay, just right like on. Cass Sunstein, or how, uh, Sus, I think it's Sunstein, Sunstein. I get con- c- confused. Cass and, Sunstein. Yeah, he's, a, he's an a-hole. He's a real a-hole, and he's married he's a to jerk. a... He's a jerk, and he wants He's to infiltrate the conspiracy realm yeah. and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. So anyway. My name is Charlie McGrath. My website is wideawakenews.com. You can contact me at info at wideawakenews.com. Thank you to everybody who contributed and continue to contribute. My co-founder is Doug Owen. His uh, website is blacklistednews.com. Great site. You can contact him at Doug at blacklistednews.com. We will see you next week with Doomcast number 43. Peace yeah. out, all. Until then, take care. Well, it looks like these hogs like beef. It's almost too delicious to believe, my friend. It's never too early to learn that the government is a greedy piglet that suckles on a taxpayer's teat until they have sore, chapped nipples.